Canaan, Alexander and Scott uh, was formed uh, about 20 years ago and uh, 21 actually now. Uh, but it was Canaan Alexander when I started with them. I was one of the first employees. That was in 2005 and I became a partner in 2010. That's kind of how it started and my background is in teaching. So I was a special ed and English teacher at high school locally um, and was uh, looking at other opportunities. So um, I was doing some real estate stuff, but this came along and uh, so I took a swing at it and it worked out, it worked out really well. So, um, so I found a, a good spot for myself here and uh, it's been going great. And there isn't a day where I don't love what I do. I, every day is a great day. Yeah, we have our specialization and that is in the, primarily in the exterior of the building. So um, the company was pretty much started with commercial roofing. So we represent a few different uh, national, international manufacturers in the commercial roofing industry and a lot of accessories and components related to that. Uh, and that slowly started morphing into walls, waterproofing and air barriers. And it kind of really started with waterproofing. One of the manufacturers in roofing that we represent also manufactured waterproofing products. That got us into waterproofing applications and then air barrier situations as air barriers became code. We started focusing on air barriers. And then one thing kind of led to another. I would get questions about claddings and if we represent different types of exterior claddings and that turned into looking for some cladding companies and then um, insulation became code. We started working with insulation manufacturers and framing was a result of that. Uh, how are you going to put this thing on the wall to meet the energy code? So we started working on that side of things as well. So um, just kind of snowballed and now we have uh, a lot of different manufacturers. There's nine of us in the group and we probably have you know, much to the dismay of some of the manufacturers that we represent, we probably have about 30 different lines. Uh, we don't all overlap and all handle the same thing. We're kind of split up geographically and by product group. Uh, so we don't represent doorknobs or hardware or carpet or anything like that. We really stick to the exterior of the building. And now on occasion, some of our wall panels will go on the inside of the building. Um, but uh, that's really been our expertise. So when we work with manufacturers and architects, it's pretty much the same people all the time because it is, uh, it's the area we work in. So we don't do a lot with interior architects or landscape architects, or we don't really do a lot with engineers either. Um, so that's where we found our comfort zone and uh, where we think we are most beneficial to the architect as a resource. We just focus on what we know. We've been involved in a, I mean, there's a lot of projects. So our area is upstate New York. We don't have New York City. And uh, so because of that, um, we don't really pick and choose our jobs. We just are lucky to have jobs at all. Uh, it's not a hotbed of construction. So we have to make do with what we have. Geographically, we're kind of locked up in that we have a massive body of water north of us and uh and south of us is somebody else's territory and you know in their whole program down in pennsylvania so uh we have a lot of smaller jobs we have some really large notable projects that we've worked on um rochester regional health was a huge panel project that we uh, provided a lot of material on we pre pretty much the whole job anything on the outside of that building we we pretty much provided everything on that that was a 100,000 square foot terracotta project. Um, so everything behind the terracotta we got, including the air barrier and all that. And, and then we did the roofing as well. All the waterproofing it was a massive waterproofing project. Um, so we did really well with that. It was a great job. It was a local architectural firm. And that's really where we succeed on projects like that. Um, we've got involved in a lot of other projects, casino projects that are monster panel jobs, uh, a lot of small, medium-sized projects because that's typically what we get. There's a lot of wood construction going on right now and that's kind of kind of working against us and that uh, people are opting to go with wood construction 
instead of steel stud and concrete and that is a problem that we can talk about later but um so rochester regional health huge project Montrain casino another really big project that we supplied 40,000 square feet of wall panels on uh and then cuba rushford naples csd a lot of school jobs and they're not really building schools they're just putting additions on so 5,000, 10,000 square feet of panels, maybe 15, 20,000 square foot jobs peppered in there. Uh, so we really have to work hard to string a lot of small jobs together with, sometimes it's difficult when you have a lot of components on the project, there's a fair amount of management on our end that we need to keep track of because we're selling the wall panels, the framing, the exterior insulation, the air barrier, and we sometimes we have to coordinate shop drawings and engineering as well and those don't always come from the same people either so there's a lot of coordination that goes in it from our end but it for some people it may seem like a lot of extra work but without doing that it's uh you know the chances of getting that job are are, are a lot slimmer so we provide a service to the contractor as kind of a one-stop shop but it does it, it does take a li little bit more of our coordination and organization to make it happen. It's a little bit of all of that. We probably in our entire area have maybe 5 million people, but that's spread out hours apart from each area. So each little area we go into is a kind of a big town. Uh, there's small cities, there are big towns. And so there aren't 20 contractors in each area doing what we do. There may only be one or two. It's been very helpful for us to establish Good relationships with the guys that do the work that we do um, so sometimes with our with contractors they'll tell us we got this job this is on a project uh, we don't want to use it it's similar to what you do and they get us involved in that way and we weren't really had nothing to do with the project and we were just have been really supportive to the arc to the contractor and sometimes we get in on that side of things uh, as far as architects go it really was in the beginning we had to go find work we had to show them, you know, uh, framing systems are nice, but they're not that sexy. So it's the panels that help. And you, if you don't have a panel, you don't have a framing system. So we really show them the sexier side of the business, which is the panels, the cool ideas, the, the inspirational projects that other designers work on and that showcase. We bring that to them. And in a, this is a, not a hotbed area. It's not a New York City. It's not a major metropolitan area. So a lot of that stuff may seem out of reach to them. We bring it to them and they see that, oh, we can act, this, this is a big city product, but we can actually use it here in upstate New York. I think it makes the architects feel, um, feel like they're not forgotten about because they're not in a big city. And, uh, you know, we're all dealing with the same really bad weather up here, or, or depending how you look at it, but um, in the same conditions up here. So we used to really have to hunt hard but now we have a reputation in the industry of being a provider of these things and we know what we do we're very technically savvy we because we're involved in so many of the aspects with roofing and tying in roofing panels to the top of the roof and how it turns into the below grade area we know all the ins and outs the details the fire code some manufacturers like us only do panels and that's it they have no clue about the fire code we do we know it all. We know the energy code. We know the fire code. We really try to be as knowledge. We want to be the best. We want to be the most knowledgeable reps, at least in this area. Um, so we haven't had to go out as much. Now we're starting to get people calling us. It, we'll still go out and hunt like we normally do, but it's getting a lot better where we're getting more calls where we didn't go in and hunt them down. They actually found us and uh, it's turning into kind of that annuity that a, a sales rep looks for where you kind of people start coming to you now you know you're not having to go out and find friends now the friends are coming back and, and asking questions and getting up getting us involved on jobs because hopefully they find that we make it easier for them well so there's a lot of different components on these jobs and that is another huge feather in our cap we have so many different solutions um, if you only have one product, you really don't have control of a lot of the other variables that make your product the complete system. Some manufacturers don't have a framing system. 
they just have, or manufacturers reps, they just have a panel and that's it. Some guys may just have an air barrier, that's it. We have it all. So we have a lot of variables that we can play with to make it a win for everybody. So with a typical panel, sometimes we can maybe switch the panel to something very similar that may be more cost effective or simply is just as expensive but maybe easier to install. Uh, sometimes we will help them with the framing. Uh, so a lot of the framing is, uh, it starts off with a very prescribed framing spacing that everybody knows will pass engineering. It'll, it'll work, everybody knows it. Typically it's two feet on center and maybe 16 inches horizontally. And we'll always start off with that, but um, a lot of times we know if we get the job, we probably space that out instead of two feet on center. We'll reduce those brackets and maybe go three feet or, or uh, on occasion four feet on center. Now we've just reduced that number of brackets and the labor to install all those brackets, the fasteners, all that stuff. We help by reducing the framing. We know we won't we won't do things that won't work. It'll all be engineered, but there's a money saving option there. Sometimes we can change the insulation types. There's a lot of different things we can do. We can change the air barrier to something else. We have a lot of variables at our fingertips that we can play around with. It's a benefit for everybody involved. It's a benefit for the architect because they get the concept that they're looking for or the exact materials that they're looking for. For the subcontractor, it makes his job easier. Maybe he is able to save a little money. For the general contractor, maybe our saving money with the subcontractor somehow ends up a credit in his favor or a faster job or just a more succinct installation of the whole entire assembly. Um, it's tough sometimes, some of these architects will choose a one a product that nobody's ever used before. It's a one-off and uh, it just can turn into a real coordination nightmare and it's going to be pretty expensive. So we think we bring a lot to the table in that respect. Sometimes architects will, uh, and it generally comes from them, um, they have great intent. Uh, they want to have, they use a specific panel on a project. Um, but there's a lot more to it than just using, picking a panel uh, and putting it on the job. Knowing the yield, the actual physical size of the panel is extremely helpful in making this uh, a practical project. In our area, budget, it's a very sensitive budget area. And uh, sometimes just throwing a panel on the wall with a certain module or dimension is not always the best way to go about it. Find out what the panel size is and then design your modules around that. The name of the game with all these panels is reducing the waste. If you have a panel, and most of these are coming from Europe, you're shipping this panel over and their subcontractor is gonna fabricate it and throw out 40% of it in the trash because of the module size that the architect has chosen. That's, that's a downfall, that's a problem. Um, so, when we, when we work with architects, we're very upfront about panel sizes. We wanna make sure that before they jump the gun, before they start doing module and massing, to uh, make sure we understand the size of the panel first so we're not creating a panel or a module that has a significant waste factor. So that's one thing. Also, uh, making sure they choose products that are appropriate for the environment, appropriate for the area, putting a specific uh, I don't know, terracotta tile. There's some of these thinner terracotta tiles out there. They're beautiful, they're great, uh, but not always great in, a, uh, in an area that may have a lot of impact. Kids throwing lacrosse balls at the wall, probably not a great place to put a thinner terracotta. Uh, so uh, someone salting the sidewalk all the time, there's certain products that are not great with that and some that are totally fine with that. So. Sometimes we see the, what we would look at as the really not the best product or the best use of that product in that particular area, um, knowing what we know. And maybe sometimes the architect didn't know or didn't ask the right question. Uh, that's an issue. And then the third one is the fire code. Uh, we're still seeing uh, manufacturers allow and architects design projects um, that do not appear to uh, address the fire code, the NFPA 285 fire code, which in my opinion, that's a big deal. Uh, um, and we're seeing 
and maybe it's from even manufacturers reps like us who don't have insulation and don't bother to learn the fire codes related to their panels. Uh, we see some manufacturer reps getting involved in projects that they just don't meet the fire code and we know it and maybe they don't know it and I'm sure they probably don't. I don't think they would be uh, purposely skating around the fire code, but uh, we're still seeing that as, a, as an issue because that is uh, setting this project up for massive change orders um, because sometimes we'll let people know it doesn't meet the fire code. Panels, panels are huge right now. It's, uh, it's even in our area, it's been great. We are in a very, um, it's an old area, upstate New York. You know, a lot of these towns were established in the late 1700s. A lot of brick and mortar, a lot of old classic buildings. Um, that has been uh, a prevailing style for, for a long time. Um, and architects seeing what we what we have to offer and what's in all these magazines and architectural related periodicals they see all these designs and it's not brick generally it's not masonry it's all panels um but what we're seeing now is architects being able to convince owners of school districts and universities to go the, the, the way of the panel um, and it was really hard for them because, uh, you know, they like the idea. Architects have always been on board, but the owners are, no, nope, we want brick. We want brick. We want brick. And it's changing. It's changing really quick. So uh, we're really happy about that. That is a, it's a great trend right now. Panels are everywhere. Tons of schools are putting panels on their buildings. Um, seen a lot of uh, planks seem to be popular within that panel genre. A lot of planks, um, vertical and horizontal, it seems to be pretty popular now. Brighter colors are becoming more popular as opposed to just the standard earth tones. And, and uh, I think earth tones maybe were a result of a departure from that brick, which is an earthy kind of look. They kind of, they took that look and, and, but just made it into a panel. And now we're starting to see more colors, more vibrant colors. So now we're really leaving that classic look and going to something more contemporary. Um, and the architects have always been on board, but the owners, that's the school boards and the, the officials and, and the administration at the collegiate level, they're starting to embrace these colors and, and do a lot of more, and just really kind of get more adventurous with all that stuff. So panels for right now, and I, I, it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. We're always a little behind too. So um, what may be a trend down in a larger city uh, may still take, you know, five or 10 years to work its way up here. I see ACM is starting to take a back seat. ACM was really the first panel that people started going with. It was either EFIS or EPS, some people call it, or ACM composite aluminum composite metal panels. Um, those have been on the market for, for probably in our area for 10 to 15 years now in, in varying capacities. And those are really starting to show their wear. Uh, you know, we don't deal a lot with aluminum composite panels, but uh, thankfully uh, their use is starting to fall in our area, starting to slow down. HPL panels are extremely popular right now, terracotta. I'm, I'm involved in probably three or four terracotta jobs right now. Pan, HPL panels, I'm probably involved in six or seven jobs right now. Um, there's uh, ultra compact panels, which are stone-based materials. Those are becoming pretty popular. I, 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 we're in a great position right now. The manufacturers that we have are are not dogs. They are pot products that are re just really popular right now. And we try to stay with the trends. We don't really drop lines as you know as trends change, but uh, but we just happen to be lucky with uh, the lines that we have are are pretty popular lines. So uh, I see metal slowing down, and in other options, metal's kind of getting played out. So I see a lot of people switching it up a little bit, spending more money on claddings, and switching to a bunch of different types. There's always challenges, budgets. Budgets in our area is always a big challenge. Uh, cost of labor is a huge challenge right now. Um, it's not necessarily panel related, but uh, 
the headlines around here are in the topics of conversation at the local CSI meetings and the AIA meetings and any you know, CFMA, any construction related industry uh, meetings, labor shortage. Uh, for a long time, schools pushed computers and, and technology and uh, that's a problem right now. We have major labor shortage. The economy in this area shrunk over the last 20, 30 years. And uh, as a result of that, the, co the construction firms shrunk as well. And now we're starting to see a surge in construction, if you can call it that in upstate New York. We, we kind of travel a very tight sine wave. And, and right now we're just on a really big upturn in construction. The contractors are having a hard time manning these projects. Uh, people aren't going into construction. It's typically an older workforce. Um, that is a major problem right now. And the cost to do construction in upstate New York is extremely expensive. So what is happening in the South, we don't get to enjoy up here because it is so expensive to build. The insurance rates are extremely, high. they're very, very high, probably the highest in the entire country. We've got some laws that nobody else has in the entire country that creates a high insurance rate. It honestly prevents companies from even starting up because it costs so much to start a construction company, uh, let alone pay your workforce to have a union area. So uh, that has uh, an increase in cost. Everything is very expensive to do up here, even though we're not in New York City, it's still extremely expensive. So when you're putting panels on a project, it's typically not an inexpensive option. Even panels that are $3 a square foot, which pretty much are reserved for residential construction, they're typically almost $20 a square foot installed. The labor is extremely expensive. We don't have the, the luxury of what is going on down south. So um, it's extremely expensive to do construction around here. So material cost is important, but reducing the labor costs is even more important. And so for manufacturers to figure ways out, and I think they're already working on that, it, figure ways of reducing um, reducing labor, re speeding up construction, uh, stuff like that is uh, is a huge help. Insulated metal panels are on a, also on a huge uh, surge as well in our area because of the speed of construction that an insulated metal panel brings to the industry. So that's uh, some of what we see going on. Some of the challenges are more labor related than panel related. Um, you know, there's, there's really no challenges with panels other than trying to get a panel on a job with the high cost of installation. Uh, when I tell people some of the costs, they're, they're pretty surprised. We represent a company that, uh, that manufactures insulated metal panels. Um, and that has been helpful. We're working on a job with you guys right now that the entire backup of the wall assembly, aside from the studs, is a insulated metal wall panel. And uh, your framing would go on top of that. And then the panels, the HPL panels and terracotta panels will be attached to the framing that's going over the insulated metal wall panels. It, that is a huge way that uh, we feel we bring to the table uh, to help speed projects up, to help reduce costs, uh, and still give that project the look that, uh, that of the intent of the of the uh, architect. Okay. So that's happening on a couple jobs too. Actually, um, they're just architects are are open to the idea, and subcontractors are starting to value engineer these jobs from traditional construction. They're finding ways to make insulated metal panels work on these jobs. They're removing the insulation and they're removing the air barrier and they're going with insulated metal wall panels. And then the framing and then the panel itself, the cladding. So it works for a lot of jobs, it doesn't work for all jobs, but um, that is a, you know, that's a big trend. It's construction, uh, whether or not it's the right product for that application, if it's chemically resistant, if it's maybe in a particular area if it needs to be graffiti resistant. Um, some of these architects uh, almost see panels as a maintenance free item. They are not all maintenance free. They don't all pass the same fire codes. So understanding the maintenance on some of these panels and understanding the fire code, that's a challenge. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information out there in the industry. There's also a lot of misinformation out there. And um, that's a, I 
think is a pretty big challenge is making sure that from an architect standpoint that they're meeting the fire code uh, and not putting their firm that they're at in uh, with too much exposure to uh, liability lawsuits and things like that. Typically the cladding drives the bus so uh, cladding will dictate everything for us uh, and the architect and anybody associated with this project. Um, the cladding will dictate the type of insulation, it'll dictate the type of framing, it'll dictate the spacing of the framing, uh, it dictates a lot of the details on the job where the panels tie into the roof where the panels tie into the uh, below grade or the sidewalk or whatever the deal is there. Um, the panel starts it all. So we don't look at anything else until we figure out the type of panel. Uh, once we figure the type of panel out, then the relationship starts to come together. That panel uh, is going to need a thermally isolated framing system. Um, it's going to need a certain type of insulation, whether it's mineral wool or polyiso. Um, air barriers have come a long way now. It used to be they needed a specific type of air barrier, but there's a handful of air barriers out there now that there's a lot you can go with. But so it's not totally predicated on the panel, but we'll work with them and making sure they have a right, the right air barrier. That's kind of it. So the panel is really driving the bus on all this stuff. Um, everything, yeah. So the trends, this kind of goes back along the lines with trends I've seen. Um, panels have become more popular. So we're seeing a lot of panels. We're not seeing a lot of metal, although it is still out there, um, but we're not seeing nearly as much. That was like the go-to product for everybody. So we're not seeing as much composite. We're seeing some single skin here and there. Uh, fiber cement's popular. Um, HPL panels are very popular. Insulated metal wall panels are popular. Glass is really popular. Uh, there must have been some advancements in glass because uh, glass has become extremely popular. Curtain wall construction, uh, that's becoming very popular. Unitization, I'm getting more requests for unitized assemblies. So stuff that uh, they're gonna unitize in a factory horizontally and crane it to the building. So we're starting to see more of that going on. That's a labor saving aspect, uh, regardless of the type of panel. That's, uh, that's a method that we're seeing is used to reduce the cost of labor. Um, so those are some of the trends. I think we're pretty good at looking at these trends. Uh, we pay attention to a lot of what's going on uh, north of us in Canada, which seems to be heavily influenced by Europe. Uh, we see a lot of what's going on in some of the larger cities. What I think we're going to start seeing more of is uh, as panels become more commonplace, experimenting with panels in creating depth on a building. So instead of just having a flat plane of panels on a wall, I think we're going to see more depth and uh, uh, textures on the panels. I know Manufacturers are starting to look at that. All right, we, we figured all the flat panel stuff out. We can do a plank, we can do a panel. They're all flat. Now our manufacturers are starting to incorporate textures on the panels. Um, you know, colors, a lot of panels have always had a lot of colors. So that really isn't a huge change. They're still, in, they're still introducing new colors, but textures on the panel and adding depth to the panels, whether it's a wide panel or uh, incorporating framing systems that maybe in the, the primary rail is the same for the whole backup system, but the secondary rail, maybe one is a couple are wider and a couple are, are, are not as so wide or shallower. And it allows panels to kind of jump off the wall a little bit. So we're starting to see more of that. Um, not so many applications of that, but requests or inquiries. Well, can you do this with your panel? we're trying to show depth how can we do this with your framing system or your panels and so we're, we're seeing more of that as the pan, the whole flat wall starts to get kind of played out so what i like about monarch is their willingness to please uh, you guys go out of your way to quickly respond to questions um, whether it's let me check on it or you have to do this or that uh, so getting answers back quickly in this industry, it has become imperative. Uh, the idea that you know you can get back to somebody in the next couple of days, you're out of business doing stuff like that. And you just it, there's no place for that anymore. There are there's too much competition. There are too many other people that will jump on that answer quicker. 
So uh, I have to, in an effort to be better for my end user, uh, it always helps to partner with manufacturers who are also equally interested in getting back to people as I am. So I think we both are on the same page and we share the interest in urgency in responding to questions and getting information out in an appropriate time frame. So I really enjoyed that about you guys. I also like that uh, you're local. Uh, so that really helps out. I deal with a lot of European companies and uh, generally it works out fine. And a lot of times they understand that to work in the US, you need to be based locally. So having you it with based in the US is a huge help. Uh, having you on uh, my time zone is also nice too. Uh, so that's always helpful. Um, and you know the area, you know, you, you, you know panels, you deal with panels, that's really all you do. This is not some, as far as I know, some side project that uh, you just stumbled upon, but normally you guys, you know, you're doing carpets or something like that. You know, this is your business. This is what you do day in and day out. And uh, I know that you guys are in it for the long haul. You're interested in building long-term relationships. I'm very comfortable with you talking with the customers that we've introduced you to uh, throughout this whole panel industry um, project that we're working on. So uh, your professionalism is always appreciated. I know that uh, if you're gonna call on some of our customers, I'm more than, more than happy to have you guys work on something with them, get them the answers they need quick, uh, that it never makes me uncomfortable to know that you guys are talking with them because you know more than I do about your product, but you're also professional. Uh, you know, you're not a bunch of goofy clowns. And if you are, at least you're not on the phone. So, uh, so I feel comfortable in knowing that what you're telling them generally is along the lines of what I'm telling them. They're getting the answers from both sides. Uh, and you know, I think we're all on the same page with that stuff. So that's a huge help.